Uh, so, Hamilton just crushed Seth utterly with force of numbers, which Seth did mitigate using the Austwins at first, but that base rush was a big mistake, I think. That was a big turnaround right there. You know, I didn't notice the VPs when he had just the two Ostwins, but all Hamilton had were four infantry squads in his base, and that's it. That might have been a good time to push, but he waited for the King Tiger, and by then he had... Uh, I didn't mean VPs, I meant manpower. But he waited, and by then he had enough for the off-map, and he was building an M10. Or did he get that in the off-map? I don't think he did. But either way, yeah. that M10... Jeez, he destroyed that King Tiger. And the King Tiger really seeing no tanks whatsoever, and he still built that. He should have just built the Panzer Fours. I don't know. Well, uh, yeah, people like to bring out the King Tiger just because it's so intimidating, but you do suffer a manpower penalty when you bring that thing out. So you do bring up a good yeah. point. I mean, he there was no armor threat from the Americans at all. It was mostly an infantry strategy. Seth uh, brought it out probably to be like the hammer, you know, like hammer and anvil with his yeah. Oswinds hammering the infantry. But unfortunately, well, the uh, hammer got smashed and the anvil got cracked and crushed. Yep. Uh, I but you know. It was kind of a back and forth game though, I mean, obviously like we just said, it looked like Hamilton was done. He was down in numbers after having the whole map for the beginning, and then <laughs> the off map. It, that must have been why he was down, he was just waiting for that, because he knew. I mean, he did the off map which got him a 57 and some infantry, and a freaking M10. Uh, once. Yeah, the off map. Surprise butts. The off map. <laughs> Surprise butts. <X. laughs> the off map win group, or the off map right group, or you know they'll probably have many names by the end of this. So uh, it, yep. that just turned the tide of the game. I mean, that just gave him such a numerical advantage over Seth. There was nothing Seth could do. I mean. That's the problem with fighting infantry company is because they will, tr uh, as you can see, a good allied player will constantly try to use his numerical advantage over you, like that. You know, he'll try to preserve his squads if he does a good job of, you know, keeping his squads alive, and out beat and uh, beating down the Germans early game, which you, we saw a lot of. The mm -hmm. Volksgrenadiers just got pounced on, got beat down, and just early and game he got hurt bad. I mean, they're just constantly getting that little, little bits of vet by killing one guy at a time, and they get their vet just like the Germans, except, you know, as long as their squads stay alive, they don't even need the Comcraft Center for Americans, because it's like, you know, they're going to they're gonna have those rank three, and they don't have to pay for it, as long as they can keep their squads, uh, one guy alive, yeah, and you don't have to true. spend any other resources. But, uh, um... I don't know, I was going to say that uh, that King Tiger was just... I just don't think... I think he just should have saved the resources for other things. Well, he should have worried... If you're fighting infantry company, you don't have to worry about tanks so much. But, uh... Yeah. The... And I was going to say, the munitions on this map, just because there's so many, that should have been another reason why he, you know, should have expected more sticky bombs because there is a ridiculous amount of munitions in this small map. I mean he was floating almost 400 munitions when he got his first arty strike and he hadn't spent anything on stickies because there was no tanks and whatever. And then he, Seth started rolling out freaking Panzer IVs and King Tigers against infantry who had infinite munition resources to spam stickies. Uh, yes, hello, cat. Now, uh, uh, so all in all, you know, good job, good try, Seth. There was obviously there's obviously there was a lot of things 
that Seth should have done to counter all that Hamilton had. It's just he he just failed to pull it off at the crucial at those crucial moments, you know, where he could have won the game. And Hamilton just came back. Uh well, good game, Seth. Uh, nice job, Hamilton, on keeping your squads alive. Good God. Though you did get yeah, pelted I by was... Austwins. <laughs> Austwins did beat the crap out of several of your squads. I think he lost a crazy amount of 57s. There was like five or six, wasn't there? Three or four or five? I mean, the one Oswind attack took out two 57s and a ton of infantry. I think it was two 57s. But then, you know, late game he lost some to like Knight's Cross when he didn't even really need the 57s that much. But he took out what he needed to take out at the end. And one with 14 points. He brought Seth down from like 300 some when he had under 100, I think. Yeah. That's good stuff. Definitely good stuff. Nice job. And so from uh, us here, this is Hellfox and Jackal. We are signing out. Good night, everybody. It is nighttime here. What time is it? It is 11.15 here in Southern California. And it's 1.15 there in Minnesota. Am I right? Beautiful Apple Valley, Minnesota. Yep, so we will bid you folks adieu.